here's our welcome slide and here are our logistics, right? So I know some people just joined us. Please go ahead and rename yourself with your first name and your school name. We want to know who you're representing um, and then share all your questions in the chat. We want to know what you're thinking about as you're watching uh, this tool demo. So the plan for today is we're going to do a quick warm up activity. We're going to share a special word with you uh, that's going to be very important for today. And then I'm going to hand it over to our VIP guest, Abby, who is going to be um, sharing her science activity and tool demo live from Stanford University, which is here in the Bay Area, um, which is really exciting. And then I'm going to hand it to you all in the audience, to all of my friends out there who I see and recognize by name to ask some questions. And then we're gonna get into the really exciting part where we uh, do a raffle. So let's get started. Um, the word of today is microphone. So this is our science warm up, warm up activity. Um, I want you to think about the word microscope. And if you know what this word means, um, Maybe you can come off mute and you can tell us what it is, or you can tell us in the chat before I reveal the answers. To but what um, is a microscope? A microscope is like a, a material that you could use to um, see small things. Yes, Abel, thank you so much. I see that you're representing Lincoln Elementary. You must have uh, Principal Sombrani, so thank you. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Good to see you here, my friend. And you are correct. So a microscope really is a tool that scientists use um, to be able to make different objects bigger. Um, so keep this word in mind. Um, it's going to come up again later, and I hope that you understand why. So, um, I believe you're all on mute, so you can all give me like a silent clap, a silent spirit, anything. But um, I want to welcome our VIP guest of the day, Abby um, from Stanford University. Abby is a second year student at Stanford um, where she's studying material science and engineering. And um, Abby is actually really, really passionate about inspiring future generations of scientists. Um, and I can tell you personally, because this is not the first time Abby um, has come to share all of her wisdom with people. This is the second time she comes to do this with us virtually. So I know that she's really passionate about um, inspiring you and your future as a scientist. Um, Abby went to college out of state and then she came to California and um, went to school again because she loved it so much and got a master's degree and then loved that so much that she then applied to this PhD program which makes her um, a doctorate level student of all of these science things because she loved it so much. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, hand it over to our VIP guest uh, so we can get into our tool demo. So here we go. And welcome, Abby. And thank you so much for that wonderful, wonderful introduction. Um, I'm super excited to share a, an actual microscope with you all. Um, has anyone here ever used a microscope before? Maybe in science class? I have. You have? Okay, yep. so a, couple, a couple people have used a microscope before. Scientists in real life, we use microscopes, like they said earlier, to see really, really, really small things. Because, you know, if you look down at your desk, right, and you say, I want to see the smallest thing that I possibly can, and you look really, really closely, your eyes can't zoom in forever and ever and ever, right? You know, your eyes can only see something that's really teeny, but if there's something that's teenier, your eyes can't see it. And so scientists develop tools to be able to help us to do that. And so I'm going to show you one of these tools that scientists have created and that something like, uh, this is something like that I use very frequently. So this is a microscope and it probably looks very different from the microscope that you're used to using and seeing in science class. So just to show you, so this is our microscope. So what we're going to be looking at is in this chamber right now. 
And the way that I interact with the microscope is through this panel. It kind of looks like a like a video game control almost. I've got all of these knobs that I can twist and turn, and I've got this joystick that I can move it around. And then this is where I actually look at my sample. So I'm going to turn this around, and then I've got another um, I've got another camera. Um, I'm like waving my hand in front of it right now. Um, that should be able to see the actual uh, microscope. Okay, so what I'm going to do. Um, is I'm going to turn on the microscope and I'm going to have you all guess what we might be looking at here, okay? All right, so I'm turning on my electron beam, which means I'm turning on my microscope. I couldn't figure out how to make this screen really big, so sorry, you're just going to have to <laughs> uh, use your use your super microscope eyes and be able to, to see. Just look at this one here. Does anyone know what we might be looking at right here? This is our sample. Anyone guess? I'll move around. And also, uh, facilitators, um, I cannot see the chat or anyone else. So if there's things that are being said in the chat, I unfortunately cannot see them. Awesome. Thank you for letting us know. So far, none. But folks out there, I know you can see it. It's that top corner that's moving. Um, I actually don't know what it is. So I... Vitamins? <laughs> Vitamins. I love that guess. <laughs> It's not vitamins. I'll give you a hint. It used to be alive. This is a part of something that used to be alive. It used to fly around. Bugs? It is a type of bug. It's a specific part of a type of bug. What you're looking at right now, do we have any more guesses before I tell you? A wing? A wing! Bingo! Yes, exactly. Um, you are looking at a butterfly wing under the microscope. But specifically, you're not just looking at any old butterfly wing. You're looking at something called a blue morpho. And so I'm going to show this in the screen with my face here. This is what a blue morpho looks like. And you can see why it's called a blue morpho, because it's got this really, really beautiful, brilliant and bright color blue. I almost have to wear sunglasses when I look at it because it's so bright. And the interesting thing about the blue morpho butterfly wing is the reason why it's the color blue isn't the reason why you, that you might think. Because if I turn around this blue morpho butterfly, is it still blue on the back side of the wing? No. 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 <laughs> it doesn't look blue to me. But then when I flip it over, there's that blue color again. And it turns out that the reason why it's the color blue is because of nanotechnology. It turns out that Mother Nature is actually very good at creating nanotechnology. And can someone remind me what nanotechnology means? And you can put it in the chat if you want to take a guess. There's, I'm still learning, we're all here to learn, right, from our dear friend, Abby. So take a guess in the chat, come off mute. What do you remember about nanotechnology? Break down that word too, I know we didn't go over it, but nano means like super, super duper small. So what do you all think nanotechnology means? Technology that helps seeing things small. Yeah, exactly. Nanotechnology that helps us do, or nanotechnology is something that scientists can do to help us do science on a really, 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 really small scale. And it's so small that we need big microscopes like the one that I'm using right now to be able to even see it. And so the reason why the blue morpho is blue is because of nanotechnology, because the color of the butterfly wing isn't actually blue. The color of the, of the butterfly wing is brown, but because of teeny tiny nanostructures um, on the butterfly wing, it interacts with light that we see from the sun and it makes it look blue. So it's really almost kind of like a trick. So I want you to come back to my uh, microscope screen right here. And I'm gonna zoom in on these butterfly wings because these little guys are, you know, these little features are, you know, big enough. I mean, they're, they're tiny, but we can see, yeah, exactly, an illusion. 
So the reason why the blue morpho butterfly wing is blue is because of an illusion, a nanotechnology illusion. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm zooming in, I'll flip this around, I'm zooming in on the butterfly wing. So I've got my hand on this magnification, you can see it's, it's labeled magnification. And when I crank it, when I move it up this way, I can change the magnification and I can zoom in and out just like this. So I'm gonna zoom in because science is more fun when you can zoom in and in and in. And you can start to see little tiny features. I've got my phone camera up so you could see kind of a closer look, but you can see really tiny features. Do you see these lines on those little, I don't know what to call them, butter, I know they're not butterfly wing petals, but they kind of, they kind of feel that way. Um, you can see these teeny, teeny, tiny lines. And I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit more. And now what I'm gonna do is focus it. So I'm gonna try to make it a little bit less blurry. And I don't know how good of a focus I'm gonna be able to get. Right now I'm just kind of playing with settings. So if you've ever used a phone app, like a, a camera app on a phone, and you can change all sorts of things about the, about the picture. That's basically what I'm doing now, except in more of a science-y way. Um, and I think maybe this is about as good as I'm gonna get for today. Um, but you can see that there are really, really, really tiny features. And something that I wanna point out to you is down here, and I'm gonna use my phone camera again. Something I'm gonna point out to you is here, this is something that we call a scale bar. And so you may have heard of something like a scale bar or a scale marker, um, or uh, I don't know what they call it in maps, but they'll have them in maps. Does anyone know what that means? Like if you have a little line in the corner with a number on it called a scale marker, anyone know what that means? Maybe you see it on board games too, like right in the corner, if there's a map, it almost helps you figure out like a, a measurement of something, if that maybe helps some folks on the call. No ideas? That's okay, we're just learning. I have no idea. That is okay. Well, good thing I'm here to teach you what that means. So what this means here, this is called a skill bar. And what it means is that this length of this line in our picture corresponds to a certain length in our actual real picture, right? Because here, so for example, this line says, I think two, one millimeter, right? So one millimeter is maybe in real life, probably about this big. So it's very, very, very tiny. But on our picture, one millimeter is this much. And so if we zoom in and we increase our magnification, you can see that our scale bar gets bigger. So I'm zooming out, Ooh, I can't go anymore. I zoom in and my scale bar gets bigger. I zoom out and my scale bar gets smaller. So as I zoom in, I can see smaller and smaller and smaller things. And for reference, right now, our scale bar says 20 micrometers. This is a really weird symbol that you've probably never seen before, but it's like feet or inches or seconds or whatever. It's just another way to, to measure, um, measure things. So this is micrometers here. And for reference, the thickness of your hair, if you take a look at one of your strands of hair, just one, one teeny one, and you look at it, that thickness that you can barely see with your eyes, one strand, is about 100 micrometers, that little thickness. And so if we look back on our picture, this length on our picture is about 20 micrometers. So here, maybe I can get a, a 100 micrometers here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now here our scale bar says 100 micrometers. And I told you that the thickness of your hair is about 100 micrometers. So if you were to take a piece of hair and put it on this picture, it would be about this thick. So each one of these little scales is about, is about as thick as your hair. So if we zoom in to all of these little lines, do you think that we could see these with our eyes? 
No. No. I agree. We cannot see them with our eyes. And that's what makes them nanotechnology. They're so super tiny that we need these gigantic microscopes in order to see them. And so it's because of these it's little structures. It's too small to see with our bare eyes. It is. Yep. And so we need big microscopes to see things that are so super tiny that we can't see with our eyes. And it's these little lines in our blue morpho butterfly wing that cause it to be blue. Even if I zoom in really, really far with my phone camera, you're still never going to be able to see these little lines that exist. And so that's what's really cool about being a scientist and doing nanotechnology is because we can take advantage of things that are so super small. You can't even think about how small they are. They're that teeny. And it turns out some really cool science can happen when you do science on the very, very teeny scale. That is Does anyone? Amazing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's yeah. cool, right? Yeah. It's Go very cool. Abby. You want to take some questions from the crowd? Does, yeah. Does anyone have any questions? I see Abel's got his hand up. Um, how, how many of those um, little pieces that are on the wings, how many are there in one wing? In one wing. Oh my gosh, that's a great question. Um, I don't actually know. At least millions, probably billions. Say what now? Mm hmm And they're all on a butterfly wing. Wow. Crazy, right? Does anyone yeah. want to guess how much it costs to buy one of these microscopes? One thousand dollars. More. Five thousand. More. One million. More. Well, it depends on the microscope. Trillion. They're about one million usually. The good ones now. They're they're between five hundred thousand dollars and a million dollars. I said a million. Yeah, Crazy, quite right? a bit of money. So quite a bit of money. Yeah, a bunch of money. Those of you in the crowd, um, thank you so much, Abby, for showing us that. Uh, I'm mind blown. I love butterflies, and I've seen those at the California mm -hmm. of Sciences. So if you all have been there, I know some folks have. Um, maybe you remember seeing them too, but um, those of you in the crowd, what are you thinking? What are your questions for Abby now that you have seen um, the power of science and the power of uh, my, a microscope? What are you all wondering? How long have you wanted to be a scientist? Since I was your age. <laughs> Yeah, tell us about that, Abby. So what were you like, what were you doing when you weren't in school? Were you in your backyard looking for bugs? I mean, were you examining dirt? Were you building Lego? What was your like science? All, <laughs> yep, all of it. So um, when I was in fourth grade, uh, my dad got me a microscope for Christmas. Um, just like a little microscope. And I remember looking at all of the different things in my kitchen. Um, and just, I remember how cool it was that there was this whole entire world that existed on the teeny, teeny, tiny scale um, that we can't see with our eyes, but you can look on, at it under a microscope and it's, you know, completely different than what you would expect. And so, um, yeah, I just remember always taking things apart and building things with Legos and playing in the dirt and, and all of that. Um, yeah. It's awesome. It's almost like it. When was the f when was when was the first time you when was the first time you ever went exploring? The first time I ever went exploring. Oh, that's a great yep. question. Um, also, probably when I was in your age. When I was your age, I grew up in the woods, and so I I, I grew up exploring the woods a lot. I always like to go in the creeks, and if you lift up the rocks, you know how there's always there's sometimes little like lizards and salamanders. And yeah, and stuff under them. yeah, yep. worm, worms. Yep. Yeah, one time I tried to find salamanders with my friends, but I couldn't find any. They can be tricky. Yeah, and I'm awesome. in fourth grade. 
any other questions that you all want to know if you're all thinking about like does abby work on a team of one as a scientist does she have teammates how many <laughs> wait where do you where do you work at or something so i work at stanford university so it's a big, big, big area with lots and lots and lots of buildings. So I actually work in many different buildings, I would say probably five or six. And so my day consists of doing some science in one building and then walking across a big field of grass and going to do some science in another building. And then, um, yeah, so I work, I work all over. So you travel everywhere? Mm -hmm. Way out. <laughs> that is awesome, Abby. And then one question, because I know that we've also got adults on this call, and um, you have been such a big fan of education and going back to school, which is amazing. I know a lot of people think about that, but then they kind of get stuck because they think about like, well, how am I going to pay for it, right? And I know that you have worked so hard um, to be able to get to Stanford. So can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, so I did. I worked very hard um, as an undergraduate in college to be able to get here. Um, and the interesting thing about going to graduate school and getting a PhD, is, which is what I'm doing, um, the interesting thing is that um, you don't have to pay. If you do a PhD in STEM, you do not have to pay to get your degree. They will pay you. And so all of your tuition is paid for and you get a stipend. So not only am I paid to get, or not only is all of my tuition paid for, I get a salary every year in order to be a grad student and do science. And that is standard across the board for any STEM degree. That's amazing. That's amazing. So How much did you get for your salary? Oh, tough it depends. <laughs> it depends. Um, that's a really good question. That all depends. Um, and sometimes it all depends what city you live in too. But mm -hmm. basically, folks, that means if you are going to get to this like super duper expert level where you're working with these uh, microscopes like Abby, Abby, school would be free and they would pay you to go do it. So that's great to hear. Um, I know we've got an awesome question in the chat from our friend Paige, but what was or what has been your favorite thing to look at under a microscope, Abby? Oh, I love that question. Okay, so my question, uh, my answer is in two parts. The first part is actually the blue morpho butterfly wing. Um, I love looking at the blue morpho butterfly wing because I just think it is such a cool way to see um, how nanotechnology is everywhere. It's not just little teeny robots that go around and doing robot things. It's um, in things like butterfly wings, and it's in things like sunscreen and rocks and mollusks, and it's it's everywhere. So I, I just think it's a really, really cool thing to be able to do. Um, and I would say my second thing, my second favorite thing I like to look at is actually um, what I do for my research. And so as a PhD student, what I do is I am trying to answer a question that no one has been able to answer before. And I am doing new science, and I am doing new experiments um, that no one has ever done before. And so I really like to take my science, um, I'm creating, I'm helping create new solar energy materials. So things like solar panels, um, we're creating new materials to do that. And I really like taking those materials and putting them inside the microscope because no one has ever seen those under the microscope before, ever. Um, and I'm the first one. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's my answer. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Abby, for um, telling us all about nanoscience and um, the power of these microscopes. Although we would love to sit here and ask you a million questions all day, um, we want to respect everyone's time and bring it back to the audience. So we want to know, audience members, um, if you remember the word of the day, and if you do, um, can you please tell us what it is? Microscope. Yes, it is a microscope. And what does the microscope, microscope. do? You can see small things. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm giving you a round of applause over here. Yes, a microscope is a tool that um, is used in science that helps you see really small things a whole lot bigger and um, now you know right that in nanotechnology you use a microscope right because it's all about like um, thinking I guess it's thinking really 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 big but looking at things like very 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 small. So I love that. <laughs> well, thanks, Abby. Um, I did have to learn a little bit about nanotechnology or nanoscience. I also know nanotechnology exists, but I'm excited. This is really science that we're going to see everywhere. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's big and small all at the same time. Um, and yes, my friends, that is what a microscope is. Um, before I hand this off to our very exciting part of our raffle, I want to uh, make sure and appreciate you. Thank you, guests, um, participants, adults, students, uh, family members, anyone who's here. We really appreciate that you took the time out of your day to be here as well as to participate and ask questions. Um, I want to take this moment to personally invite you and remind you to come to our event tomorrow, which is going to be at 4 p.m. And it's going to be a really awesome time where you all get to meet and um, ask questions to four different students who have gone to a bunch of different schools in Oakland and have now gone to a bunch of different colleges. So please come learn about them, ask them questions tomorrow. And then as always, follow us on Instagram, kindergarten to college OP. You get to find out about the work we're doing. And then our YouTube channel has all of our videos. And then if you have any questions about anything, please go ahead and email us. We are so happy to chat with you. You can reach us at k2c at oaklandpromise.org. And 